Greetings to you today from Botswana. I have something today. I'd, I'd like to look a little bit at the higher ways of God, which are very important to us as believers in Christ. But of course, they are kind of out there and beyond our reach. He has given us his word by which we, uh, by which we can know him in all things important. But he's also given us his Holy Spirit, which is absolutely key in prayer and in searching him. I just thank the Lord for his nearness. He has been so near so many times, so many ways. But his higher ways, again, can be a little bit out of our sight. And so I like to share a time when I had a failure. But uh, that was a failure in human eyes. What the Lord is thinking exactly, of course, it was beyond me. Some of the good I benefited from. Now, we as believers live in a world, it's, it's kind of a, a results-oriented society. And people want to know about all the prosperity that God will give you. And that if you are walking right in the Lord, people will love you. Uh, everything will go well. Uh, your health will stay well. Everything will be good. Or, you know, quickly be good again if there's a, a little bump. But this really is not the testimony of Scripture. And... Uh, it is the trial of our faith that is more precious than gold that perishes. And so it was some years ago, uh, my wife and I were still in America and I needed a saw, an electric saw. Through the years I had had some different electric saws to help me with building projects at home. I like to make relatively simple things with wood and I used this a lot, but my saws had broken down over the years and of course, in, in some respect, we were getting ready to leave. We didn't know exactly when. I think this was probably about two years before uh, we left for Africa. But nonetheless, it came down to I needed a saw and I had a choice. One would be a circular saw and the other would be a miter saw. Either one would do the job that I needed it to do. I was much more familiar with a miter saw uh, I had not used a circular saw to any great extent, but they did essentially the same job. For those of you who don't know, a circular saw is kind of portable. You can take it anywhere. It's either by a cord or cordless and you run it along the wood. With the miter saw, it's a little heavier and you bring the wood to it. It can cut at an angle and such. And I was very accustomed to the miter saw, also called a chop saw. I'll refer to it as a chop saw. That is uh, the easiest way for me to think about it. And so the thing is, though, at the time I'm looking at this and I'm still a steward of God. What does he want me to get? What do I actually need? And looking around, I found that the circular saw was about one third the price of the chop saw. This was uh, distressing to me. I had hoped it would be a lot closer. I had had a good deal on my other chop saw when I had had that one for years. And this wasn't nearly as good a deal. And uh, everywhere I looked, it was about the same. About $40 for the circular saw and about $120 for the chop saw. And so, but I really wanted to commit this to the Lord. And I think that's the important thing. Because we had the money for either, glory to God alone. But I wanted to be sure I made the right decision, knowing that he would provide with whatever we needed even if the more expensive one was the better choice. And so I really prayed. I took my time. I sought the Lord. And in the end, I got the circular saw. As I went on with the circular saw, I came into a project and I began using it and I struggled. As I said, I was not well familiar with using the circular saw and I made some mistakes. And in the end, I had to get uh, another piece of wood I had made enough mistakes that I needed another piece of wood. I, I usually would order extra just in case something is wrong, goes wrong. Uh, it wasn't expensive. It wasn't a big deal. But what bothered me so much is that, I mean, I prayed. I mean, I was praying, Lord, what should I do? And I really thought that I had laid all on the altar. And uh, so this bothered me. And I got alone with the Lord at a point. I wasn't complaining, but I was saying, you know, what happened? Why couldn't I see this? I don't want to say, you know, that I'm, I've sought you and I have found you and then, you know, nothing goes right. 
And so I spent some time in prayer and just kind of coming to grips that somehow my own cheapness, you know, I couldn't get past the fact that this one saw was one third of the price and it just seemed like it would be okay. Uh, maybe that's what happened. I don't really know. But there was a lesson to learn, and that is in the greatness of God. But when I went to him in prayer, as I was seeking him and finishing up in prayer, I just, I thanked the Lord for the saw he had given, for having enough money to make purchases, because there was a time in our lives we didn't have enough to eat for some times. And I thanked him for that. And I just said, I just said, Father, I'm not asking you for another saw. I'm not asking you. I said, I just thank you for this one. And I pray that you would help me to, to uh, learn to use it. I think it's in Colossians, it says, in Jesus, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So he certainly knows how to use a circular saw. I said, I'm not asking for one. I'm not asking for another saw or to spend more money or anything like that. It was two days later when I was on my job. I was uh, delivering papers. It was kind of a uh, merchandiser circular that I would deliver in neighborhoods. But two days later, I was delivering this. And in this neighborhood, it was, a, it was a trash day where they had all their trash put out to be picked up. And as I drove up the street, sitting out with a pile of trash, there was a chop saw. You better believe my foot went to the brake of the van pretty quick. I stopped, I backed up the van, and I quickly put the chop saw in. It was with the trash. It was, uh, there was no question about it. And I had to look at it because I didn't know uh, why they had put it out. Apparently what had happened is uh, on this saw, up on the handle that they pulled down, uh, it was the on-off switch, and it had broken. And uh, the person who had had it before, they kind of jury-rigged wiring uh, instead, of, uh, instead of the switch so that you could take the cord and you could just plug it into the wall and it would turn on and you pull it out, it would turn off. In other words, it worked, it just didn't have an on off switch. And so that's the way the Lord provided me a chop saw. All I can say is that in thinking about it in the past, it looks like a failure. I have failed, I have tried so hard to search for the Lord and I can't get past I can't get past Andy. But if he had given me, if he had shown me, managed to show me to get a chop saw, I'd have been thankful for it. But what would have happened? Would God have received so much glory? Would he have been able to prove himself? If I shared with others, oh, I thank Lord, thank the Lord I got a chop saw the other day. I'm so glad that he provided this for me. They'd have said, well, that's nice. I'm glad for you. But this is something that truly shows the faithfulness and presence of the invisible God and the way that he cares over us. So I hope this is an encouragement to you. Please don't let any apparent failure seem to get to you because in Proverbs 16, 3, the Lord has provided, has provided a scripture that says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and he will establish thy thoughts. So if you're committing your way to him, he will direct you even at the point if you may not, it may not seem like it, trust him at his word, for God is not a man that he should lie. Please remember to look in the description for other scriptures listed. May God quicken this for your blessing. Thank you.